Welcome back, everyone, to day four of the Living Story. Who's excited? Yeah, bring the energy. Week goes quick, eh? It's already day four. Wow. Let's review what we've learned so far. On Monday, we learned that the stories we believe matter because through them we understand the world and ourselves. And we learned about the living story, the story of the Bible. Nice. It tells us that we're made on purpose in the image of Nice. Let's say Monday's memory verse together. God created humankind in his own image. Nice. And we learned that we're valuable just because we're made in God's image. Just like that $20 bill we had, it doesn't matter what we do or what happens to us. And once again, we can also have some humility because we aren't God. We're not the creator. We aren't the author. We're made in his image to reflect him, created by him. Just like the mirror, we can't exist and we only live in, through, and for him. But do we always do this? Do we always reflect him how we're supposed to? Because on Tuesday, we learned that even in a world without sin or suffering, what God gave to us humans and the way he created us just wasn't enough. We wanted more. Let's say Tuesday's verse together. If you do what is right, right, you not be accepted. You do not. Good job, Good job everyone, guys. wow. Since Adam and Eve, every single human has given in to this sin crouching. Every human hasn't trusted God's generosity and doubted that he is enough for us. We try to take more and more and more for ourselves. We grasp the cookie, not trusting that there's a full platter just waiting to be given to us. And because of this, we don't act like the generous image bearers of God that we're meant to be. And yet, and that's not where the story ends, there was one person, there was one man who didn't give in. There was one man who ruled over sin for us, and his name is Jesus. Jesus. Let's say yesterday's verse together. God made him. Great job, boys and girls. That's awesome. It's so awesome hearing all you guys know your memory verses. And I know, how many of you know memory verse Maxima? Have tested it so far? A few. What about Ultra? Nice. Well done, guys. I know over the last three days, you guys, as you've been in your small groups and doing discussion time, that you guys have shared what are some of the things you always want more, more, more of. And how uh, is sin crouching at your door? How do you let it rule over you and... When you do, how does that start to destroy your life and your ability to function as the image of God that you are? I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, what that looks like for me. When I was young, like starting in kindergarten till about grade three, I was that kid in the class that nobody liked. I was the one that everybody made fun of, the one that like, if you wanted to insult someone else, you could say, oh, well, you like Sarah. And that was like the worst insult you could give someone in the class. And uh, I I kind of had one friend, but she was like, you know, the other loser. And uh, by grade four, there was a, a girl who decided to be my friend, and she kind of brought me in to the rest of the the class, and I went to a really small school where it was the same kids for all 10 years of elementary school. And by grade seven or eight, you know, it was a lot better. I kind of had friends, but I also knew like, no boy was ever gonna have a crush on me. Nobody would like me, nobody would choose me or want me, and I even probably thought, you know, my friends, like, they put up with me, but I better be good enough and worth it so that they'll still want to be with me. Uh, Aside from, 
getting married to my husband and getting to be a mom to my children. Uh, getting, to, getting to serve at this day camp has been the biggest privilege of my entire life and the biggest generous gift that God has given me on top of my husband, my kids, and the grace that he's given me of his relationship. And so, so many people throughout all these years that we've been doing day camp have been so encouraging and so excited to serve alongside me. And not just with day camp, but all the other things that I've got to do over the years, like junior youth and all kinds of stuff. And then even more than that, two years ago, I got to quit my job as a high school math teacher so that I could come on staff. And yet, it's still not enough. I want more. I especially want to feel more respect from the key people I respect. I want my husband, I want my closest friends, I want my dad, who's now also my boss, I want the other pastors to think I'm worth it. Ever heard the expression, oh, that's more trouble than it's worth? Anybody you guys know that? It's, I don't know if that's still a thing people say. I really, really want to be more worth than I am trouble. And I think there's something different about that than wanting to be perfect. And I think maybe it's worse. Because I really want those key people in my life to think that I'm so great or good, that when I screw up, when I let sin rule over me, well, they'll write it off and they'll say, oh, it's fine because she never usually does that. Or, you know what, she'll fix it. She always does. I want people to think, yeah, she's a little bit much or she's too loud and she takes over sometimes and she's forgetful about all the practical things that really matter and only remembers all the stupid things that nobody cares about and she overcommits, but she's worth it because... And I live in fear that they won't think I'm worth it that they won't want me or choose me because I'm more trouble, I'm more annoying to have around than I'm worth. So when I think that someone I respect thinks I did a bad job, especially if I think that they think that I don't know I did a bad job and I'm too blind to it, I let sin rule over me and I stop being thankful for God's graciousness and I start getting bitter towards my husband or towards my friends. Don't they know what a good job I do? Don't they know how hard I work? Don't they know how much I care? Don't they know how much I'm trying to love them? How much better at it I am than them? Don't they know I deserve their grace and forgiveness this one time I screwed up? I'm trying to be my own hero. I'm trying to get to righteousness and right relationship with people and with God by myself. Do you know, we've, we've used this image. Do you want to grab this for me? This is not going to go well. Sorry, one second. Unplanned. <laughs> you know, we've talked about this, how we try. We've got this, this gap, right? And so we try all these things that we want more, more, more of. Because we think, you know, if I, if I am more and more and more good, then I can be right with God, then I can be right with other people. If I get more and more success and achievement, I do better and better at school, I do better and better at my job, then I'll feel okay. We do all these things that can't ever work. We try to be our own heroes, and so do I, instead of trusting generous God to be righteousness for us. I don't know about you, but I get anxious when, you know, Ruben shared this, sorry, this is why you don't sometimes do unplanned things. <laughs> but I, I know Ruben shared something like this on, on Tuesday, but I'm mentoring all these young people, and then when they go and talk to other people or get advice from other people, Part of me gets jealous about that. Instead of being happy that they have a whole community of people who loves them. When I see people in the church that I'm part of caring for go and talk to one of our other pastors, I get nervous that those other pastors will think I'm not doing a good job caring for that person because they had to go to them and now that burden's on them and I'm more trouble than I'm worth. We all want more, more, more. 
and we let sin rule over us. And we let it rule over us again and again and again. And it starts to break the essence of who we are, right? It starts to destroy our ability to image God. So you want more success. And so you'll do whatever it takes to try to get it. And you want more money and more friends. And your ability to be the image bearer of God that you are is destroyed and broken. But God is a generous God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us. So on the cross, Jesus took all our brokenness, all our sin, as we talked about yesterday. He never had any sin, but he took all of ours on the cross. Remember the first part of Tuesday's verse? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? Jesus did what is right, and he was accepted by God. If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? As we've talked about this week, our problem is we can never do what is right, right enough. So how are we ever going to be accepted by God? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But the verse we learned yesterday says we become the righteousness of God. So because Jesus gives us his righteousness, we are accepted. And our verse for today is also from 2 Corinthians 5. And it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. Jesus, because he gives us his righteousness, he empowers us by his spirit, we can become new creations in him. And today in craft, you're going to get to make something like this, to remind you that even though you let sin rule over you and it starts to break and destroy your life, Jesus gives you his righteousness. And because of that, you are accepted by God. Jesus rose from the dead. He started new creation. He kick-started a time when the world would be remade. But you know what? His friends, when they even saw him risen from the dead, they didn't, they didn't get it. They still didn't understand what was happening. Peter, his disciples, didn't understand why Jesus the Messiah would have to die. And I know some of you have memorized memory verse ultra. And I will tell you a little story around that. So Jesus had risen from the dead, but the, some of the people didn't know he had risen from the dead. So Jesus appears to two of his friends walking, and his friends are like, oh my goodness, it's been so crazy in Jerusalem. This man that we were following, we thought he was the Messiah, but he died. And then Jesus starts and goes through the whole living story, the whole Bible, the Old Testament and the prophets and the Psalms, and he shows him how the whole story, he reveals the mystery. That's why today's mystery day, because Jesus revealed to them the mystery that all through the Old Testament, the whole thing has been le was leading up to Jesus in his resurrection. And he revealed that all of creation was about him. We are his images. And if we are in Christ, we get to become new creations and be part of bringing his new creation come on earth. So then, so then, so then we ask you, are you in Christ this morning? And are you tired of being driven by your need for more and more 
and more? Are you tired of being angry and hurt and bothered when someone else is honored? Are you tired of comparing yourself to every person around you? Then we implore you this morning, on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. And I want to encourage each and every one of you, there's a reason that you're here today. This is not an accident. This is not a coincidence that you're hearing this message. Maybe a friend invited you. Maybe you just needed to go somewhere in summer for a week and your parents signed you up and you had no idea what you're getting into and now you're here. Maybe your friend invited you to volunteer for the week and you just need to fill some community service hours. Great reason. Maybe this is your first year, your first time in church, your first time hearing this message and maybe this is your hundredth time hearing it. Maybe you're so used to church. Whatever the reason may be, Whatever the purpose you're here today, there is a reason you're here today. And you know why? That's because today is the day. Do you hear Jesus speaking to you? Have you felt something different this week? You see, today is the day that you can be free from the sin ruling your life. Today is the day you can lay down your desire for more. Today is the day that you can say no to the sin crouching at your door. Today is the day that you can trust Jesus as your Lord, that he is enough, and that you can become a new creation in him. Today is the day to be reconciled with God, to accept this gift of righteousness that Jesus offers us, and become right with God again, and be the image bearer that you were made to be. So today, if you hear his voice Do not harden your heart. Do not turn away. Don't ignore this. Don't pretend that this is just another day camp, just another message, a mindset. Don't pretend that this is just another religion, just another church. This isn't just another summer camp. This isn't just another day camp. This isn't just a week away from home. This isn't just a way to get volunteer hours. This isn't just a chance to hang out with your friends and a a place to stay for a week away from home. This story, the living story, is alive. And there's another chapter just waiting to be written. Today, your life can begin again. Don't receive this gift in vain. Don't believe it's empty or useless. Don't ignore Jesus' voice as you hear him call. He is waiting He is listening for each and every one of you to turn to him, to choose him as your hero, as the true hero. You can trust him today. You can trust that he is a generous and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in his loyal, infinite, generous love for you. In lesson, we'll have the chance to accept this gift of Jesus' righteousness, this gift of being made right with God, to become part of the new creation, free from sin, and free to live as the image bearer that we're meant to be. You see, we get to thank Jesus. We get to thank him for his sacrifice, for taking our sin on that cross. We get to thank him that we could be made right with God, that we can become part of the new creation, that we can be free to live as these image bearers. And we say sorry. We're sorry for letting sin rule over us. We're sorry for the separation that we've caused by our sin. And we get to ask Jesus to give us his righteousness and ask the Father to accept us, to become the Lord of our lives and help us to live as the image bearers of God that we were created to be, to accept this gift that he has freely and generously given us, to become right with God and to become new in Jesus, the one true hero. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much that you created us in your image, that we're all unique, that we all bear you in so many different ways and that we have the privilege and the opportunity to reflect you. Thank you for each and every camper and leader in this room. And thank you that we know that you've placed us here for a reason and a purpose and that we're made on purpose for a purpose. 
I ask today that you would open each and every camper leader parent's heart, Lord, whether this is the hundredth time we've heard this or the first time, that we can be made new in you, that we can be free from the sin ruling over us, that you would fill this room with your Holy Spirit and that we would experience you in this place, that you would soften our hearts and minds to accept this gift of righteousness. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.